Oh, do stop that infernal racket, Watson. You'll cause an avalanche. Oh, nothing could spoil such a perfect day in the mountains, Holmes. Oh, but I say, what's that? Could it be the abominable snowman? No, Watson, it's not deep enough. Mm, it belongs to an even more diabolical creature. You don't mean... Yes, I suspect foul play, Watson. That rascal Moriarty is a master of disguise. Devil's Mountain is 6,000 meters high, and I happen to know that when your cable car reaches the sign on the side of the mountain, it'll be exactly 10 seconds away from the top. And I also happen to know that this cannon can fire a boulder at an initial velocity of 350 meters per second, which means that it'll also take a total of 10 seconds for the boulder to shoot up past the mountaintop and then land back down. So, if I fire my cannon just at the very moment that the cable car passes the sign, Holmes, Watson, and the boulder will all arrive together. <laughs> Good grief, Holmes, you're right. Look, just in front of that cute Swiss chalet, that must be Moriarty, and he's getting ready to fire a great boulder at us. What shall we do? Don't worry, Watson. We're just about to pass the sign now, which means we'll be at the top of the mountain in another ten seconds. Yes, but Moriarty is firing his boulder at this very moment. Oh, we're done for this time. No, we're not, Watson. We'll have plenty of time to get clear of the cable car when we arrive at the top. Well, we thought we were all in one piece, but what happened to Moriarty's boulder? No, don't worry about that. It'll take the boulder a total of 30 seconds to pass the top of the mountain on its way up, and another 10 seconds before it comes back down again. Uh, just step this way and observe. Here comes the boulder on its way up. Yes, right on time. And now we wait ten seconds for it to come back down again. Here it comes. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh, oh I say, that could have been us. But how could Moriarty have miscalculated so badly yet again? He must have known the initial velocity of the boulder, the height of the mountain, and the time of our arrival. And yet he still got it wrong, huh? Yes, I just don't understand, Holmes. I'll give you a hint, Watson. Moriarty did indeed have all the information required, but he still didn't take all the factors into account. Hmm? Welcome to the seventh program in the Power of Algebra series. In the last program, we looked at polynomials, groups of unlike terms linked together by plus and minus signs. And we used a simple method for solving a polynomial equation with two variables. In this program, we're going to see how to solve polynomial equations that involve square variables. Like x square, as in x square plus 2x minus 63 equals 0. This is called a quadratic equation. To solve quadratic equations, we have to deal with factors. And that's what this program is really about, factoring. Remember. Factors are numbers that multiply together to make a product or term. The factors of the term 9x, for example, are obviously 9 and x. But the 9 itself can also be further broken down or factored into 9 and 1 or 3 and 3. So 9, x, 3, and 1 are all factors of the single term 9x. Factoring is the key to solving the kind of quadratic equation we saw just now. Quadratic equations are always written like this, with the polynomial, or to be more precise, the trinomial, on the left side, and zero on the right. To see why quadratic equations are written this way, we have to look at where this particular example came from. An area problem. Suppose I know that the area of this rectangle is 63 square feet, but I don't know its length or its width. All I know is that the length is two feet more than the width. The formula for area is length times width equals area. L times W equals A, or 
w times l equals a, which is the same thing. Let's let x equal the width of the rectangle, and x plus 2 equal the length. We already know that 63 equals the area. Then replacing w with x, l with x plus 2, and a with 63 gives us this equation, which we would normally write like this. If we now multiply that, we get x squared plus 2x equals 63. In order to put this into the standard form for a quadratic equation, we need to get the 63 on the left as well. And we can do that simply by subtracting 63 from both sides. Since 63 minus 63 is 0, we're left with x squared plus 2x minus 63 equals 0. So we're back to the original quadratic equation with the trinomial on the left and 0 on the right. To see how factoring can tame this quadratic equation, we have to take another look at polynomials. In the last program, we added and subtracted polynomials. They follow exactly the same rules as numbers. Now it's time to multiply them. Suppose you wanted to multiply x plus 2 by x plus 6. First, put them in grouping symbols, and then use the distributive property to multiply both terms in the first parentheses by both terms in the second parentheses. In other words, multiply every term by every other term, x times x, x times 6, 2 times x, and 2 times 6. x times x is x squared, x times 6 is 6x, six 2 times x is 2x, and 2 times 6 is 12. Now, since 2x and 6x are like terms, we can add them, 8x. So the product of the original pair of binomials is a trinomial. So that's how you multiply polynomials. But notice that what we have here is very similar to what we had in the quadratic equation, with the square term on the left, the linear term in the middle, and the numeral at the end. This is no accident, because this trinomial is the product of two binomials. And the trinomial in our equation is also the product of two binomials. In fact, if we can find out which two binomials multiplied together produce this trinomial, we'll have the solution to the equation. And to do that, we do our multiplying in reverse. Because after all, if we can go from this to this, we can also do it the other way around. Undoing the multiplication is factoring. Start with the first term, x squared. The factors of x squared are x and x. Now we undo the third term, 12. 1 goes in 12 times. 2 goes in 6 times. 3 goes in 4 times. 4 would go 3 times, but now they're repeating. But which pair of factors do we want? Well, since the middle term of the polynomial is 8x, Look for the pair that can undo the middle term by adding or subtracting. So the factors we want are 2 and 6, because 2 plus 6 is 8. Not all trinomials can be factored with this method, but let's try our original equation. What are the factors of 63? Well, 1 times 63. 2 won't go. 3 times 21. 4, 5, and 6 won't go. And 7 goes 9 times. Since 63 is negative, one of the factors will have to be negative also. How can we make the 2 in 2x out of negative 7 and positive 9? So that's what we put in the grouping symbols, negative 7 and positive 9. Then to complete the new equation, we write in equals 0. Now, stop and take a look at this new equation. We've split the original trinomial into two factors. And the product of those two factors is equal to 0. You can only have 0 as the result of a multiplication, when at least one of the two factors being multiplied is also equal to 0. In other words, either x minus 7 equals 0, or x plus 9 equals 0, or they could both be equal to 0. If x minus 7 is equal to 0, then x is equal to positive 7. If x plus 9 is equal to 0, then x is equal to negative 9. That's why quadratic equations always have two possible solutions, which makes sense since a square term is the product of two numbers. But which value of x do we want? Positive 7 or negative 9? Well, in this case, x is the width of this rectangle and can't have a width of negative 9, so 
x must be positive 7, making the width of the rectangle 7 feet. The length, which is x plus 2, is then 9 feet. And 7 times 9 is 63. We've solved our first quadratic equation by factoring. Good thing for Holmes and Watson that Moriarty doesn't know how to do this. Uh, factoring. Oh, of course. That's what you do to solve quadratic equations to find the value of a square variable. Excellent, Watson. And now let's ski down the mountain. Perhaps a little vertical motion will help you see where Moriarty went wrong. The vertical motion. I, I have it, Holmes. The, the vertical motion formula. Uh, D equals RT minus 5T squared. My goodness, that was quick. Yes, I am quite an exponent of skiing. <clears throat> Get it, Holmes? <clears throat> exponent? Uh, square variable? <laughs> Just do the equation, Watson. Right. D for distance equals R for rate or initial velocity times T for time minus 5T squared. We know the distance, the height of the mountain, which is 6,000 meters. And I happen to know that Moriarty's cannon fires boulders with an initial velocity or rate of 350 meters per second. So all we have to work out is the time the boulders should take to reach the top of the mountain. So we start by putting all this in the standard form for a quadratic equation. First, let's switch it around to get the t's on the left side. And now to get the 6,000 on the left side as well, we subtract 6,000 from both sides, which also gets us our zero on the right. And next, we want to put the square variable first. But, oh dear, our square variable is a minus quality. That's no good, is it? No, but it's easy to put right. We simply invert all the signs to get positive 5t squared minus 350t plus 6,000. But we still have 5t squared. How do we simplify that to t squared? Divide everything by 5, of course. Oh, yes, quite so. <laughs> so now we get t squared minus 70t plus 1,200 equals 0. Now we start factoring. The factors of t squared are t and t. What factors of 1,200 add up to negative 70? Well, the uh, factors of 12 are 1 times 12, or uh, 2 times 6, or 3 times 4, 3 and 4, uh, 30 and 40. Uh, that adds up to 70. And to make it negative 70, we just make them negative 30 and negative 40. And negative 30 times negative 40 still multiplies out to positive 1,200. So now we have two values for t, 30 and 40 seconds. In other words, Moriarty's boulder should reach the top of the mountain after 30 seconds and come back down again after a total of 40 seconds. But for the boulder to land back on us just as we arrived at the top of the mountain, it would have had to go up and come back down again in only 10 seconds. How could Moriarty have miscalculated it would do that? I told you, Watson, because he didn't do his factoring correctly. He must have looked for the factors of 70 instead of the factors of 1,200 and come up with negative 7 and negative 10, thus mistakenly predicting that his boulder would reach the top of the mountain on the way up after 7 seconds and on the way down after 10 seconds. Poor old Moriarty, he couldn't factor his way out of a paper bag. <laughs> Perhaps not, but he could persuade something most <laughs> abominable to come out of a cute Swiss chalet. Don't give me any more of that abominable snowman stuff, Watson. It's only Moriarty dressed up. Not snowman, Holmes. Snowmen? Who has that cable car?